What's hot? What's hip? What's happening? What's shaking on your hump day? As always, we here at the Tom Gully Show hope you are receiving the full, total, and complete amount of hump that you so desperately crave and you so rightfully deserve. Like, subscribe, share, do all those free things. If you'd like to contribute like SG Fanboy did yesterday, very, very generously, you can go to paypal.me slash Tom Gully Show. We've got replayables tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Shuley Network. We've got all sorts of things happen. But I am going to tell you, let me tell you about Billy the Kid tonight. I would like to point out that I received, uh, many of you have seen us speaking with the chef, Randy Ramos, in our chat room. And uh, he is a chef that's worked at all sorts of restaurants, Asian Fusion, you name it. He sent me a picture. He's now a high-end pizza chef in Indianapolis. Sent me a picture of one of his pizzas. I wish we had had this for our, our show about pizza. Look at that. Look at that. I don't know specifically what kind of pizza it is. Uh, if he comes into the chat room, perhaps he'll tell us. But that is the work of one Randy Ramos from our wonderful chat room. Uh, Ronald J. Bateman is here. Uh, Ronald, of course, has been to the condo for Bushmills. And he says, gully heads unite. So, yes, I'm sure there'll be a lot of uniting going along. Uh, Julian Zizer says, hmm, looks amazing. I bet it is. Fawn Leibowitz says, definitely has anchovies. Now, now, why do you say definitely has anchovies? What, what makes you say that? I know that perhaps elsewhere on the internet, you're used to making completely unfounded claims that you're not qualified to make. But here on this show, that won't fly. That won't fly. The chef is in the house just in time to view one of his scrumptious creations. Tell me, chef, does that pizza have anchovies on it? The answer better be no. I don't think it is. And tell us what kind of pizza it is, if you would be so kind as to do so. Von Lieberwitz, I don't know that you know what thin ice you're on, because we all know who you actually are. You're not fooling anybody. Hmm. Tempted to play my sound clip and video as well. Not gonna, but I'm tempted. Randy Ramos says no. So once again, Fawn Leibowitz, you are wrong. You lie. He says, I'm not VTL. Well, if you were, would you say so? I have it on somewhat reasonable. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Joker Fish says, wow, that pizza looks great. Doesn't it, though? Now I'm hungry. I always do this show when I'm hungry. That might be a mistake. That might be a mistake. We do got to get kind of cracking today because uh, replayables are on in 58 minutes. Got a lot of ground to cover. And so we might as well get to it. I don't understand why StreamYard tonight is giving me a <clears throat> little connection. Not, it's not a warning or anything, but come on. Come on. I got two. <laughs> StreamYard. 
really chap my wagon on a regular basis, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. StreamYard, you really do. Uh, chap my wagon. I'm telling you. I, I probably am guilty of listening to too much Texas country music. That was another thing I wanted to do. Um, our good friends at Sonic Asylum Radio, I probably don't say it enough. These guys are great. They are really, really awesome. And uh, we've been with them as long as I can remember. They are awesome people, every single one of them. Uh, they're great. If you love heavy metal music, you're going to love this show that they put on. They've got several different specific shows. My favorite, and I'm not going to say, you know, that, you know, some of them aren't awesome because they're all awesome, but I just love Metal Maiden Vicky's Metal Euphoria on the weekend. It really takes me back. So give them a listen. Um, they have our show on their Facebook page. They've been kind enough to do that. I haven't been able to convince them to let me do a Texas music show. I, I think it would be off format. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll be able to. Let's get through a few chats and then we'll get into Billy the Kid. Uh, good evening, says SG Fanboy. SG Fanboy, thank you so much for your very generous donation to paypal.me slash Tom Gully Show. Means the world. Really does mean the world. Thank you so much. Fon Leibowitz says, definitely has cheese. What kind of pizza is that, Randy? Jay Ramos. Tell me what kind of pizza it is. What, what were you making there? All right, I think it's about time we get down to cases. Um, there's lots of Texas metal bands. Well, Pantera. Damage plan. Um, look at that. Wow. Anyway, great, great Texas song called Me and Billy the Kid. Very, very good song. There he is, Billy the Kid. There he is. Now, many of you may think that Billy the Kid was named William H. Bonney. He was not. He was born Henry McCarty. And you may think he was born out west. He was not. He was born in New York City. Yep, he, he was born in New York. Uh, he was born in uh, September or November of 1859 and uh, reported to have lived till 1881. We'll get into that too. Okay, now, he was orphaned at the age of 15. His parents were Irish Catholic, Catherine and Patrick McCarty in New York City. And we know he was born in 1859. We don't know whether it was in September or November of that year. Uh, he had a younger brother, but his mother was widowed. And that's when she and her son moved to, wait for it, Indianapolis, Indiana where she met a man, and then they moved with that man to Wichita, Kansas in 1870. And after moving again a few years later, uh, they got uh, the family moved to the New Mexico Territory, Santa Fe to be exactly. Then they moved to Silver City, and uh, his mother died at the age of 15, when he was 15 of tuberculosis, and the man she married abandoned the two boys, leaving them orphans. So uh, there was a woman named Sarah Brown that gave him room and board in exchange for work, but in 1875, he was caught stealing food. Ten days later, uh, he and another man robbed a Chinese laundry, stealing clothing and a couple of pistols. He was charged, was jailed, escaped two days later, and became a fugitive. Uh, he located his stepfather, stayed with him until the guy threw him out. He stole some clothing and some more guns from him, and that was the last time he ever saw him. He, still going by the name McCarty, uh, traveled to the Arizona te Territory, where he worked as a ranch hand and gambled and you know, did what ranch hands do. And then in 1876, he was hired by this fella right here, okay? And he uh, was a man named Henry Hooker. Now, also during this time, he became acquainted with a guy named John Mackey, who was a criminal and uh, 
former U.S. cavalry member who used to kind of hang around the Army post, post, excuse me, can't speak today, uh, at Camp Grant in Arizona. And they very quickly began stealing horses from the local soldiers. And uh, about a year later, that's when he started referring to himself as William H. Bonney. Okay? So... In 1877, he was at a saloon in the village of Benita where he got in an argument with a guy named Wendy Cahill, who was a blacksmith who had been bullying him. And on more than one occasion, this is when he was, I think, around 18 or 17, called him a pimp, which was not a name that you called someone back then. Uh, Bonnie, in turn, called Cahill an SOB, but he didn't use the initials. At that point... Windy threw him to the floor. They struggled for the revolver that Bonnie had on him. And at that point, Bonnie shot and killed Cahill. And a witness said Billy had no choice. He had to use his equalizer. Cahill died the next day. Bonnie fled but returned a few days later and was apprehended by the local justice of the peace. He was detained and held in the Camp Grant guardhouse. But again, he escaped before law enforcement could arrive. He stole a horse and fled Arizona for the New Mexico Territory, but some Apaches took the horse from him, leaving him to walk many, many miles to the next settlement, which was Fort Stanton. And he was starving and he was near death, but he went to the home of a friend and fellow criminal, John Jones, and that guy's mom nursed him back to health. Once he got healthy, he went to a former army po post where he joined a band of rustlers who raided herds of cattle owned by John Chisholm of the Chisholm Trail in Lincoln County. Lincoln County will become very, very important very shortly. He was spotted in Silver City, and his involvement in this gang was actually documented in a local newspaper. Now... After returning to New Mexico, he worked as a cowboy for an English businessman and a rancher named John Henry uh, Turnstall. And that's John Henry uh, Turnstall right there. <clears throat> Turnstall and his business partner were opponents of an alliance of other cattlemen that had kind of formed an economic and political hold over Lincoln County for quite some time due to their ownership of this big beef contract with the local fort and all of the dry goods stores in the area. So one of these guys owns some money to the other and they asked Lincoln County Sheriff William Brady to attach nearly $40,000 worth of Turnstall's property and livestock. This was Turnstall's business partner. Now, Turnstall put Bonnie in charge of nine prime horses and told him to relocate them to his ranch for safekeeping. Now, meanwhile, Sheriff Brady assembled this huge posse to seize Turnstall's cattle. In February of 1878, Turnstall learned of the posse's presence on his land, and he rode out to intervene. During the encounter, one member of the posse shot Turnstall in the chest, knocking him off his horse. Another posse member took Turnstall's gun and killed him by shooting him in the back of the head. Well, Turnstall's murder ignited a conflict between these two factions and thereby started the Lincoln County War. So after Turnstall was killed, Bonnie and a fellow by the name of Dick Brewer. Here's Dick Brewer. That's not an adult film star name. His name really was Dick Brewer, uh, who swore affidavits against the sheriff and those in his posse and obtained murder warrants from the Lincoln County Justice of the Peace. So the sheriff's on one side, the justice of the peace is on the other. And in February of 1878, while attempting to arrest Brady, the sheriff and his deputies found and arrested Bonnie and two other men riding with him. Deputy U.S. Marshal, friend of Bonnie, and a detachment of soldiers captured Sheriff Brady's jail guards, put them behind bars, and released Billy the Kid and Dick Brewer. 
Bonnie then joined a group called the Lincoln County Regulators. And in March, they captured Frank Baker and William Morton. These were two of the members of the faction that they were against. Uh, and they were accused of killing Turnstall. And Baker and Morton were killed while trying to escape. Okay. Uh, on, in April 1st, the regulators ambushed Sheriff Brady and his deputies. And Billy the Kid was wounded in the thigh during the battle. Brady and another sheriff were killed. Four days later, Buckshot Roberts and Dick Brewer were killed during a shootout. Warrants were issued for several participants on both sides, and Billy the Kid and two others were charged with killing Brady and two other people. Then, the Battle of Lincoln takes place. On the night of Sunday, July the 14th, the regulators, now a group of 50 or 60 men, went to Lincoln and stationed themselves in the town among several buildings. And uh, Bonnie, a guy named Florencio Chavez, Jose Chavez A. Chavez, Jim French, Harvey Morris, Tom O'Follard, and Igneo Salazar were some of these guys, uh, positioned themselves on the roof of the saloon. And a couple other guys were defending a nearby bunkhouse. <sighs> Newly appointed sheriff sent sharpshooters to kill the people defending this saloon. And the sheriff's men retreated when one of the, sh the snipers was killed. Uh, and he then sent a request for assistance to Colonel Nathan Dudley, com commandant of nearby Fort Stanton. In reply to the sheriff, Dudley refused to intervene, but later arrived, arrived in Lincoln with troops turning the battle in favor of the faction that was against Billy the Kid. A gunfight broke out on Friday, July 19th. Uh, the regulators gathered inside one of their houses, and uh, when the building was set afire, the occupants began shooting. Billy the Kid and the others fled the building when all the rooms but one were burning, and during the confusion... Uh, the head of the regulators was shot and killed by a guy who Billy the Kid then shot and killed. So Bonnie and three other survivors that were regulators of the Battle of Lincoln kind of hung out near the Mescalero Indian uh, Reservation when the bookkeeper for that Indian agency was murdered. All four were indicted in the murder despite conflicting evidence that he'd been killed by one of the constables in town. All of the indictments, except for Billy the Kids, were later thrown out. U.S. Marshal informed, this gets really wild here, informed newly appointed territorial governor and former Union Army General Lou Wallace that he held warrants for several men, including Billy the Kid, but he couldn't execute them due to all the violence that was going on. And General Lou Wallace issued an amnesty proclamation which pardoned anyone involved in the Lincoln County War since Turnstall was murdered. But that amnesty excluded persons who had been convicted of or indicted for a, a crime and therefore did not include Billy the Kid. So he got no amnesty offered to him. Now, here is General Lou Wallace. He was a highly decorated uh, you know, Civil War general. I believe he was from Indiana or grew up in Indiana, but here's the thing that's kind of going to blow your mind. This guy wrote, how many have seen the movie Ben-Hur with Charlton Heston, chariots, all that stuff? He wrote Ben-Hur. He's the guy that wrote the novel that that movie was based upon. It's actually called uh, Ben-Hur, A Tale of the Christ because General Lou Wallace was a very, very religious man. So Bonnie and one of his friends by the name of Tom O'Follard were in Lincoln, and they watched as an attorney named Houston Chapman was shot and his corpse was set on fire. According to the people that were there, 
these two were innocent bystanders and they were sort of forced at gunpoint to witness this murder. Bonnie wrote to the governor. He wrote to Lou Wallace on March 13, 1879, with an offer to provide information on the murder of this attorney in exchange for amnesty. And two days later, Governor Wallace replied, agreeing to a secret meeting to discuss the situation. He met with Wallace in Lincoln on March 17, 1879. He actually met the guy. During the meeting and in subsequent correspondence, the general promised Billy the Kid protection from his enemies and clemency if he would offer his testimony to a grand jury. So then, three days later, the general writes him another letter that, that says, and I quote, to remove all suspicion of understanding, I think it better to put the arresting party in charge of Sheriff Kimbrell, who shall be instructed to see that no violence is used. And Bonnie responded on the same day, agreeing to testify and confirming that proposal for his arrest and detention in a local jail so that he would be safe. A day later, he let himself be captured by a posse led by Sheriff George Kimball of Lincoln County. As agreed, Bonnie provided a statement about Chapman's murder and he testified in open court. However, after his testimony, the local district attorney refused to set him free. After remaining in custody for several weeks, Billy the Kid began to suspect Wallace had used subterfuge, sabotage, sabotage, and would never grant him amnesty, so he escaped from the Lincoln County Jail in June, March to June, so they'd had him for a while. Now, he stayed out of trouble until 1880, when he shot and killed Joe Grant, who was new to New Mexico, uh, nobody could figure out what the beef was about. Um, apparently, Bonnie thought that Grant had intended to kill him. He walked up to Grant, told him he admired his revolver, and asked to examine it. Grant handed it over, and before returning the pistol, which he noticed only contained three cartridges, Bonnie put the cylinder of the revolver in such a position so the next hammer fall would land on an empty chamber. Grant suddenly pointed his pistol at Bonnie's face, pulled the trigger, it failed to fire, and that's when Bonnie drew his own weapon and shot him in the head. Uh, a local newspaper quoted Billy the Kid as saying, the encounter was a game of two and I got there first. So, at this point in 1880, Billy the Kid forms a friendship with this rancher named Jim Greathouse, who introduced him to another guy named Dave Rudabaugh. In November of that year, Bonnie Rudabaugh and another guy ran a posse led by Sheriff's Deputy James Carlisle. They were cornered at one point in Jim Greathouse's ranch, and he told the posse they were holding Greathouse's hostage, which was not true. Carlisle offered to exchange places with Greathouse, the... Uh, you know, sure. Uh, and Bonnie said, sure. Carlisle later attempted to escape by jumping through the window, but he was shot three times and killed. Ended up being a standoff. The posse left. Bonnie, Rudabaugh, and Wilson rode away. A few weeks after this incident, Bonnie and a bunch of his buddies rode into Fort Sumner. Unbeknownst to him, a posse led by Pat Garrett, was waiting for them. The posse opened fire. It killed his friend, Tom O'Follard, and the rest of them ran away unscathed. At this point, Governor Wallace posted a $500 bounty for Bonnie's capture. Pat Garrett continued his search for Bonnie, <clears throat> and they captured him eventually, along with you know, three other guys at a place called Stinking Springs. The prisoners, including Bonnie, were shackled, taken to Fort Sumner, then to Las Vegas, New Mexico. And when they arrived, they were met by a huge crowd of people. The following day, a mob, an angry mob, gathered at the train depot before the prisoners, who were going to board the train and depart for Santa Fe, uh, the sheriff, backed by an angry group of men, demanded custody of Dave Rudabaugh, 
uh, who during an unsuccessful escape attempt in April shot and killed a deputy. Garrett refused to surrender anybody. There was a huge confrontation. And then Garrett finally said, look, I'm not going to let any of them go, but I'll let the sheriff and a couple other guys accompany me to Santa Fe where they can ask the governor to release Rudabaugh into your custody. Uh, Bonnie, after interviewing with a reporter, said he was unafraid during the incident, saying, if I only had my Winchester, I'd lick the whole crowd. <laughs> the uh, Las Vegas Gazette ran a story of a jailhouse interview involved, you know, following Bonnie's capture. Uh, when the reporter said Bonnie appeared relaxed, he replied, what's the use of looking on the gloomy side of everything? The laugh's on me this time. During his short career as an outlaw, Bonnie was the subject of numerous U.S. newspaper articles, some as far away as his hometown of New York. So after getting to Santa Fe, he sent Governor Wallace four letters over the next three months, and Wallace refused to intervene. So Billy the Kid went to trial in April of 1881. Following two days of testimony, Bonnie was found guilty of Sheriff Brady's murder, and it was the only conviction secured against anybody in the Lincoln County War. The judge sent him to, sent him to hang. His execution date was scheduled for May 13, 1881, and this is the <laughs> this is the legend that the judge told Bonnie he was going to hang until he was dead, dead, dead. To which Bonnie replied, "You can go to hell, hell, hell." And uh, the historical record indicates he did not speak after the sentence was delivered. But so after the sentencing, they moved him back to Lincoln, where he was on constant guard on the top floor of the town courthouse and while Garrett was in another town collecting taxes uh, one of the deputies took five prisoners across the street for a meal leaving just the jailer who was a deputy with Billy the Kid Billy asked to be taken to the outhouse and uh, Bonnie was walking ahead of Bell up the stairs to his cell after using the you know bathroom and while walking up the stairs he hit around a blind corner got out of his handcuffs and beat bell with the loose ends of the cuffs uh he, then he grabbed his revolver and fatally shot him as bell tried to run away his legs were still shackled and he broke into garrett's office took a loaded shotgun left behind and waited upstairs uh, for someone to respond to that gunshot that had killed the deputy. And he, he called up to him, look out, old boy, see what you get. When this guy that was running in looked up, he shot and killed him. After about an hour, Bonnie freed himself from his leg irons with an ax. He got a horse, rode out of town. Some people say he was singing as he left Lincoln. So now Bonnie's on the run again. And Governor Wallace places a new $500 bounty on his head. After three months, Garrett, hearing that Bonnie was around Fort Sumner, left Lincoln, along with two deputies, to question people and friends of, of Billy the Kids. Uh, this one friend spoke with him on the same day for several hours, and around midnight, the two of them were at this guy's house when Billy the Kid unexpectedly entered the house. Now, at this point, accounts vary as to what happened. According to, quote-unquote, history, as he entered the room, he failed to recognize Garrett because it was very poorly lit. Drawing his revolver and backing away, uh, Bonnie asked, who is it? Who is it? In Spanish. Recognizing Bonnie's voice, Garrett drew his revolver, fired twice. The first bullet struck Bonnie in the chest just above his heart, while the second missed. Garrett's account leaves it unclear whether Bonnie was killed instantly or took time to die. A couple hours later, the local justice of peace gets a coroner's jury of six people, and uh, 
they looked at his body. They looked at the location of the, sh the shooting. The jury certified the body as Billy the Kid. And uh, one of the people on the coroner's jury said, I knew it was Kid's body that we examined. He was given a wake by candlelight, buried in the next day, and his grave got a wooden headstone. Five days later, Garrett travels to Santa Fe, wants the $500 offered by the governor. Uh, the new governor, the acting New Mexico governor, refused to pay the reward. Over the next few weeks, residents of various other towns raised money, and Garrett ended up getting $7,000 for killing Billy the Kid. Uh... About a year later, the New Mexico Territorial Legislature passed a special act to grant Garrett the $500 bounty promised by Governor Wallace. Now, people started claiming that Garrett unfairly ambushed Bonnie. <clears throat> Garrett wanted to tell his side of the story and got a journalist to ghostwrite a book for him. The book was called The Authentic Life of Billy the Kid. It was published in April of 1882. It only sold a few copies in its time, but later on became a very important historical document. So now this is the part that some of you are really going to like. Over the years, there were several, not just one, several legends that William Bonney was not killed, that Garrett had staged that incident and death because he was friendly with Billy the Kid and kind of wanted him to evade all of this persecution and, and uh, people seeking him out for breaking the law. They want him to just get away and start all over. During the next 50 years, a bunch of people claimed they were Billy the Kid. Many of these were very easily disproven, but two of them have kind of hung on. In 1948, a man in Central Texas, Ollie P. Roberts, who was also known as Brushy Bill Roberts, started claiming he was Billy the Kid, and he went before New Mexico Governor Thomas Mabry actually seeking a pardon. Now, Mabry dismissed the claim that he was Billy the Kid, and Roberts died very shortly afterwards. Nevertheless, Hico, Texas, where Roberts lived, opened a Billy the Kid museum. John Miller, an Arizona man, also claimed he was Billy the Kid, and uh, this was unsupported by his family until 1938, long after his death. Uh, they exhumed him without any permission from the state. DNA samples from the remains were sent to a laboratory in Dallas and tested to compare to Miller's blood samples obtained from the floorboards of the old Lincoln County Courthouse and a bench where Body's body allegedly was placed after he was shot, and the lab results were useless. Other researchers sought to exhume the remains of his mother, Billy the Kid's mother, Catherine, so they could test that DNA, but... Most people believe that her body was washed away in a flood. There was a giant flood, and this graveyard that she was in, lots of the bodies were washed away. So there's really no way to tell even who she is. Many people, they've done FBI face recognition between Brushy Bill Roberts and Billy the Kid, and I think it came out to a 93% certainty, but that's, you know, who knows? Who knows? Um, records have been sought by people uh, from the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office. One guy sued them uh, for not releasing those uh, records and, and won nearly three hundred thousand uh, dollars because it took so long. The Lincoln County Sheriff's Office said, we don't have anything. And then he sued him. And then 133 pages of documents were provided. But there was no conclusive evidence in those pages that could confirm or disprove the story of Garrett killing Bonnie. Uh, 
this guy that sued him was first award $100,000 in punitive damages, but that was overturned by the New Mexico Court of Appeals, and the lawsuit ultimately cost Lincoln County $300,000. People have even petitioned for a death certificate to be issued for Bonnie and uh, officially certify his death under New Mexico state law, which has not been done. Now, I'm going to show you a picture here. Because the picture, uh, this picture here, is thought to be the only picture of William H. Bonney, Billy the Kid. However, many people believe that this picture is of Billy the Kid as well. He's playing croquet, of all things. Never been proven, but a lot of people think that that is Billy the Kid. So... That's the story of William H. Bonney, really Henry McCarty, Billy the Kid. Let's get through your chats, shall we? Let me put Billy back up here for good luck. By the way, once again, Randy J. Ramos's pizza. Maybe in the chat he will tell us exactly what kind of pizza that is. Fawn Leibowitz said, definitely has anchovies, didn't have anchovies. Lot, a lot of people, much like a lot of people believe that Billy the Kid did not get killed by Pat Garrett, a lot of people believe Fawn Leibowitz is actually someone else. So, ZZ Top, not a metal band. Sorry, Fawn. Fawn, let me just go ahead and tell you, if you're going to start talking about Texas music, you better have your act together around me. Okay. Cupcake. Um, Randy J. Ramos says it was an employee pizza, so it has different stuff on it. I believe it's chicken. Tastes like chicken. Linden's here, says good evening. Von Leibowitz said all the greats were born live or live, born or live in New York City. I don't know about all that. Although, Jerry Jeff Walker not his real name, but Texas music legend, was born in Oswego, New York, I think, maybe. He's born in New York. Uh, Fawn Lee, but says, Billy was around, now I know a good lawyer. Does the lawyer claim at the beginning of every one of his live streams that nothing in the show is legal advice and then dispenses nothing but legal advice? Does the same lawyer offer up psychological advice? Does the same lawyer say things like, um, all criticism is self-criticism. Really? Hmm. Gosh, if I am a critic of the practice of embezzlement, am I then an embezzler? Hmm. Gee. Hmm. That's the dumbest saying I've ever heard. Uh, does the same person also say that the number one most important thing in a relationship is the other person's physical appearance? Is that what they say? Uh-huh. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that guy must be a genius. Must be why he has so much time to not practice law. Uh, by the way, I worked with a number of lawyers. They don't think much of him. And, and they've, they only needed one sampling. Uh, good old Billy, he was just misunderstood. Me and Billy the Kid never got along. Anyway. Good old Texas song. Uh, regulators. Yeah, they were regulators. Stacy Allen. Oh, Stacy Allen. Stay. I wonder if Gully will get to the part where Billy went to San Dimas with Bill and Ted. <laughs> well, that's part of the legend and lore. Hey, 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 not just uh, uh, Stacy Allen, everybody. I forgot. This is one of the most important things, and I forgot it. Oh, incidentally, as I, you know, I do these custom, uh, custom backgrounds. This one here is uh, Tom O'Follard, Charlie Beaudry, and William Bonney. Um, pals, it says, and it's a headstone there. And uh, so there, check this out. Yes, I'm wearing this is the heather color, long sleeved, as you can see, it's very thick and comfortable. And what I love about it, it doesn't have a tag, it's one of those good shirts where they just print the tag information on the back because it's classy. Everything we sell in the store is classy. It's all classy. Um, so there you are. 
It's like a soap opera for gunslingers. Yeah, people thought he was just kind of mean and went around shooting people. Man, he was in all sorts of stuff and captured so many times and released so many times and actually corresponded with and met the guy that wrote Ben-Hur. I mean, all over the place. Reverend Wild Bill says, you notice they never mention a girlfriend or significant other, but he had a face only a mother could love. Well, it was the Old West. Billy fled to Mexico, wasn't killed. That was someone else's body. Well, that's one of the, there's, there's many, 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 many theories. Um, Toby McGroby says, hey, guys, nobody's ever late, but sorry nonetheless. Watching the Tom Gully show means never having to say you're sorry. Unless you're me. And I say a bad word like I did yesterday. Reverend Wild Bill says, a great friend of mine acquired me a copy of The Authentic Life of Billy the Kid by Pat Garrett. Awesome. Uh, first printing. Whoa. Now that'd be worth a few dollars. Be for, yeah, I'm good. Had some, yeah. Um, happy birthday. St is it Stacy Allen's birthday? Is it? You're kidding me. Well, we've buried the lead here. We've buried the lead here. Birthday. Happy birthday, Stacy. Aku Mugen. Hey, Tom, seen you chatting in TSN chat, so I figured I'd check you out. Well, thank you. I appreciate you. I, that's very nice of you. Very, very nice of you. Um, thanks, Toby. Thanks, Red Stacy. What, 22, 23? Wild West guys were badass. They don't make them like they used to. Well, they were badass. But dudes in the Wild West didn't always feel the need to be fair. Like Billy tricking up that guy. I mean, they'd wait outside of a saloon and just shoot a guy from behind and stuff, too. Uh, but they were badass. Buried in his boots? I don't know. Was that in coins? Coin, coin. I'd assume so, because... Uh, you know, they gold coins, I think, were more popular than folded money. You're right, Stacy. There's not many of us around as there used to be, but we're still out there. Just got to look in the right places, says Rob Bill. Hey, gang, the Kahuna's here. <laughs> Lyndon says, the book was titled The Duck of Deck. I know, poor joke. Duck, says I. Uh, Stacey Allen says, I think you're Billy the Kid, Reverend Wild Bill. He could be. He could be. Aloha. Aloha. Kahuna. No, ma'am. I'm Wild Bill. Better than Billy. People saying hello to each other. Uh, Aku Mugen says, I've never had anchovies. I haven't seen it as an option. Um, hopefully, Voldemort, the lawyer, has left us by this time. Yes, we won't speak his name. Julian Caesar says, Randy Ramos, your chef portrait was very cool yesterday. Should I bring that up? Should I get the uh, chef? Uh, for those of you who didn't see it, Randy Ramos is a longtime uh, follower of the show. And let me see if I've got, I do have it here. There we go. Look at that. There he is, man. I'm not messing with that guy. I don't think Billy the Kid would mess with that guy. No way. No way. Uh, Sven is here. Hast du gut sprechen? Yeah, gut sprechen. Uh, you know. Uh, you know, ich verstehen sie. Uh, Hugh says, I never thought von Liebowitz was VTL. Until now. Well, maybe not. Aku Mugen says, glad you're here. Hope you come back. Yeah, we'd like to have you back, Aku. Fastball. I'd be a good is a good Texas band. Fastball? Yeah. Okay. No, it's not your birthday. Oh, well, who started that? Um, is there going to be swearing today, <laughs> says Code? I don't... F anyway. Uh, happy birth <clears throat> birthday. You missed being a leap year baby by one day. And it's not even her birthday. Happy birthday, Stacy Allen. I think Stacy has like four birthdays a year. Works for me at Applebee's. Let's see here. That happens every day in Chicago. Okay, Chicago expert. Okay. Uh, Jokerfish. 
saying hi to Kahuna. Toby McGroby, I found a lot of chatters seem to have tens of birthdays a year, but I'm choosing to believe. I, I don't, I'll believe anything you tell me. I like that strategy. But aging only one time per year is enough for me. Oh, my sister. My sister, Kelly. My sister. She's, uh, she's popular. Hey, you got to get a hold of me about that thing that we were talking about. We got to do that thing fast. Call me tomorrow. I'm sure I'll be here. Randy Ramos says, cool. Fawn says, I've done nothing to warrant this treatment. Right. Right. Billy Nee says, Billy Joe Schaefer, born in Texas, died in Shake. Well, Billy Joe. Billy Joe was Billy Joe Shaver was not the sort of gentleman that you mouthed off to in a bar. I will just say that. You know? Yeah. Gully's show is a fun hang and educational too. <laughs> I can't say that. Uh, if you enjoy the show, be sure to hit that like, smash that share. And if you're on YouTube, the preferred channel, subscribe and ring that notification bell. It's free and most appreciated. Yes, as are your donations. PayPal.me slash Tom Gully Show. SG Fanboy yesterday, very kind and donated to the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Ronald Bateman says, Jesus, Lizard, great heavy Texas man. Okay. Randy Ramos says, is the senior lecturer in the house? Oh, yes. The senior lecturer. Hey, Joker. Hi, Tom. Sorry I'm late. We've, we've talked about this. Nobody's ever late to this show. Well, I can be late, but nobody else can be late. Uh, there's my sister, my sister. I will. I found some great facts. Awesome. We're halfway there. We're halfway home. Um, senior lecturer. Um, hey, Joker. Let's see here. Julian Zeter says, why was pimp such an insult? What did it mean? It meant the same thing that it meant now. <clears throat> but to someone that was a cowhand and a rustler and kind of a rough guy, it also meant something of a dandy, and it meant someone with extremely low morals and extremely low character and not a very manly person. It was, it was a very, very bad insult. Unless, of course, you were. Um, Joker Fish says, Rigor Mortis was an 80s heavy metal band from Texas. Don't you guys know any of the good ones? Don't you know any... Tommy Alverson or 1100 Springs or Tom McElvain or, or uh, Hayes Carl. Well, he's from Arkansas, but still. Um, let's see. Um, Charlie Robeson. Oh, Charlie Robeson. Robert Earl Keane. None of that. Uh, Aku says, fair warning, my jokes don't always land. Think of car crash or Homer booing. Hey. Who, whose jokes do always land? Rigor mortis was amazing. Uh, Ronald. Yeah, man, dug them. Julian Zeezer says, how come metal bands are never named after pleasant things? Uh, Whiskey Myers is a, a Texas band. Cross Canadian ragweed, although they're from uh, Oklahoma, I think. Uh, I remember them. Pat Green. You know? You know what I'm saying? little Dale Watson for you. Those guys, you don't know? Those, those. Fastball is not heavy metal. Oh, didn't know that. Never heard of them. Uh, who else? Man, I could name them all day. Name them all day. What do we got here on time? Oh, just about 14 minutes. The replayables will be on the Shuley Network. You will want to see them at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, well, let's just see here. They asked Dave Mustaine why all his songs were about death, and he replied, What is there to write there, write about? Uh, Hughes says, Roger Krieger. Oh, Roger Krieger, Tesla. Um, I forget who the heavy metal person was. She asked him why she, the Queen of England asked him why he had to play his music so loud. He said, Well, it's to bang me head, mum. <laughs> Oh, uh, the Texas Troubadours, you know, asleep at the wheel. Akko, you'll feel better about your jokes after enough time reading my chats and listening to my, you know, the show here. You'll, you'll feel great about it. Uh, but, um, but then, man, there's a bunch of them. 
There's a bunch of them out there. Zane Williams. Uh, Sabaton is a Swedish power metal band. Highly recommend is their song about war monuments. Okay. You guys, you metal people need to go to Sonic Asylum Radio. You will love it. Man of War. But you're subverting all of my good Texas music bands. Uh, Dog Ganyas. Let's see here. Oh, come on. Come on. How about a little uh, Fritz Schultz? How about a little bit of Fritz Schultz out there? Huh? These guys. Oh, Jared Sterrett and the Hired Guns. They're okay. Uh, Tejas Brothers. Let's see here. Oh, Robbie White loves me some Robbie White. Bunch of guys. Uh, Steve Helms, you know. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Town says just tuning in. Hope I didn't miss much. Well, only 54 minutes. We'll be on for another 12. Actually, 11. The Vaughn Brothers, yeah. Stevie and Jimmy. Uh, Aku says, most are high energy, others will bring you to tears. Julian Zeter says, cattle rustlers give steers false hope. We're being rescued. <laughs> Aku says, I'd love for them to write a song about the USS Texas. Well, you should write one. Check out their song, The Way, based on a true story. Julian Zeter says, best band from Texas, the Purple Hulls. The Purple Hulls. And then you got the late greats, like Jay Johnson Band, and which somebody that's on this show right now used to perform with. And then you got um, Ronnie Spears. Man, Ronnie Spears. Um, Jesus Twins. Fawn, you just say stuff. It's just, you just say things. Um, you just say things. Uh, Man, if, if you just, 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 just Dale Watson alone is just, uh, let's see here. Don't know that guy. Oh, Buffalo Ruckus. There's a good one. There's a good one. Um, gotta love Buffalo Ruckus. Nate Burnham, he's pretty good. Two Tons of Steel, that's a damn good band. That's a damn good band. I tell you what, that's a damn good band is what that is. That's a damn good band. That's just a damn good one out there. Um, oh, Jeff Hobson. How can I forget my good, good, good friend, Jeff Hobson? Please, gotta love you some Jeff Hobson. Um, there's a bunch of good ones out there. Oh, Mark Lafon. Oh man, that man can play a guitar now. That Mark Lafon, he 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 can play that git fiddle. I'll tell you what. Uh, let's see who's playing at guitars and growlers. Which one do I want to pick? Uh, let's try the Richardson one. Guitars and growlers in Richardson, Texas. They got one in Flyer Mound, too. And they got one up there in McKinney. Let's see events. Maybe it's under events. Uh, up there in events. No, it's, that's, just, that's just events. That gone it. It's just like trivia and stuff I have up there now and then. Anyway, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Let's see here. Los Lonely Boys are from Texas. Yes, they are. And the Fabulous Thunbirds. Well, somebody said the Vaughn Brothers. So Jimmy Rogers is the guitar player for, but yes, yes, the Fabulous T Birds are from Texas. Uh, <laughs> Stacy Allen says, Fawn Leibowitz, feel my ubiquity. 
Stacy, I think you're the person that told me that Fawn was somebody we don't like. Uh, as a Canadian, I sadly know little about Texas. Well, we ain't going to blame you for that. I sent you some pervish stuff, says the wolf. What else is new? What else is new? Julian Caesar says, I'm going to tell my friends we ought to be buried together in their headstone called pals, like Billy the Kid and his pals. No, that's a real band. I know it's a real band. It just doesn't really pertain to anything. Uh, Stacy, I love that one that should have been on the soundtrack. The Wolf says hello to everybody. By the way, phone lines are, well, I got to close them here in a second. Phone lines are open. 972-994-6822. I like that Billy Strings. Yeah, the Reverend. Texas is a nice country. Sets right between the USA and Mexico. Things are bigger in Texas. They sure are. Jesus twins were ahead of their time. They really were. Evening Wolf. Uh, Bob Bill says, I see what you did there. I mean, Toby says that. Uh, but are those bands explosive? I don't know. I was not explosive. The Wolf was explosive. Um, I was athletic and had quick feet. The Wolf was a fan favorite. I, I was the white version of explosive, which is deceptively quick. <laughs> Stacy Allen says, no, I did not say anything about fun. Well, somebody I trust did. Uh, the Kahuna says, I went to grade school with Mark LaFon. Probably a different ML. I haven't heard that name in 45 years. This is LaFon, L-A-F-O-N. Best guitar player in Texas. Electric. Uh, hey, Rev. Far too hot for me. Literally can't handle it when it goes over 40. It was in the 40s today. Uh, but yesterday it was in the 90s. And it's going to be in the 80s next week. Uh, I like bluegrass, but I don't trust Billy Strings. Billy Strings. I mean, there's the biggies, like, you know, George Strait and stuff like that. But uh, with a name like LaFon, should play the bass. It's LaFon. There's no D. There's no D at the end. Well, I... You guys really, okay, hold on. Let's see if I can find it an easy way. I've only got five and a half minutes because I got to be out of here before the replayables. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find this. Oh, found two of them. What in the hey, ho, hi. How am I going to play this, though? I don't think you guys are going to be able to hear it unless I. Now, you can tell me if you. Oh, I know a way. I know. I know a way. I know a way. I know a way. I know a way. I think you guys can hear it if I play it on this. I'm pretty sure. I don't know for sure. I got this thing set up here like you game lady was going to say, my Lord, son, I really hot dang you are, Lord, son, I reckon shoot shucks, dip me in doo-doo and roll me in cracker crumbs. All right, let me see if it's it. Listen to the electric. Let me go to a solo here. So, uh, boom. 
Come on now. Come on. I've only got a couple of seconds here. Jeep don't boast on. That's the same damn thing. I might be able to find another one. I say, daggone it. That, that dang dong dong dong. Uh, hold on here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best for you, folks. I'm gonna do my best. Uh, Come on now. Come on now, Tom. Come on now. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Poop. Poop. Can't find it. I can't find it. Darn me, darn me, dang me. Time it to a tree and hang me. All right, I got less than two minutes to say thank you all for being here. You're the best. Like, share, subscribe, do all those things. Go to the merch store, paypal.me slash Tom Gully Show if you want to. We got replayables coming up very quickly on the Shuli Network. You need to be there. Tell them Tom sent you. Um, only thing I got left to say, other than I'm going to put your chats up during the closing song, is um, come on now. Whoops, got to close the phone lines. Uh, only thing I got left to say is, till next time, we'll see you next time. I don't